All right, in this lesson, we're gonna look at another ratio. This is the second of the third ratio in this section. And we are talking about the return on equity. So let's get started with helping you understand the return on equity. So return on equity represents the amount of income earned for every dollar invested in the company by a common shareholder. So, you know, at the end of the day, when we invest a dollar into a company, we wanna know what's the return on that one dollar. And we're not necessarily looking at this from like, what's the return personal from the price increase of the investment, we're actually looking at this from a company standpoint of if we bring in a dollar of our um, investors' money, how much are we generating in um, returns for them? So that's what we're looking at this for. So return on equity. What's our equity based on how much we're making? So um, at the end of the day, a common shareholder wants to know, wants their investment to make a return, and this quantifies that return, at least for the company. Like I said, it's kind of hard from a um, to do this calculation from an investor standpoint, because from the investor standpoint, they might have paid more than what that share was initially issued for in the IPO. So again, we're looking at this from the company's perspective, not necessarily from the investor's standpoint. All right. So how do we calculate return on equity? Well, we are going to take net income minus preferred dividends like we did in the last lesson. And we're going to divide this by the average common stockholders equity in dollars. So we're not looking at number of shares this time. We're looking at it from a dollar value amount. That's going to give us our return on equity. Now, just like EPS, we are looking for, oh, sorry, one more thing. Average com common sh stockholders equity. So uh, average common stockholders equity is equal to taking the stockholders equity minus preferred stock minus additional paid in capital for preferred stock. Basically, we want to compare what our common shareholders has put into the company and what part of their retained earnings are part of the common shareholders. So we're going to take out preferred shareholders uh, par value as well as their additional paid in capital. So that's how we calculate the denominator. Little Little bit more difficult than before. All right, so what are we looking for? We are looking for the higher the ratio, the better the return. And so at the end of the day, we want to see this as high as possible. So that's what we want to do. But just like EPS, we don't want it so high that it's unattainable. We actually want some type of way of comparing this. So oftentimes we compare these results with the past results, but we also can compare a little bit better with industry data because we're looking at what is our return based on our investment from our shareholders and another company and their investments from their shareholders. So when we look at the ratio here, we usually get a percentage or a decimal, which we can then compare to other companies. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, assume company A reported net income of 55,000. In addition, the company issued preferred shareholders. So we kind of have the same information here. At the beginning of the year, the shareholders equity balance was $1,050. 290 was preferred stock. At the end of the year, the equity balance was $1.12 million and 290 of that was preferred uh, stock. So what is the return on equity? So the first thing that we should calculate is the preferred dividend. So how much preferred dividend has um, needs to be paid because that's going to help us calculate the numerator part of this net income minus preferred dividend. So to get to preferred dividend, again, we're going to take the $20,000, multiply it by the $8 par value, times 10% because that's what this uh, preferred stock gives. And that gives us $16,000. So that gives us our preferred dividend. The next thing that we're gonna wanna calculate is our average common shareholders equity. To do that, we're gonna have to calculate the beginning and the end, add them together, divided by two. So to calculate that, we're gonna start with our beginning and we're gonna take our total equity balance and subtract the preferred stock balance. So in this case, the beginning was $1,050,000, and we're gonna uh, subtract 290,000 from that. When we do that, we're gonna get $760,000. And then our ending balance, we're gonna do the same thing, but our ending balance went up by $70,000. So we're gonna take 1.1 million and subtract 290,000 from it. And that should give us 830,000. 
dollars. Okay, so those are the two numbers that we're going to need to calculate the average. We're not going to calculate the average here. We're just going to go ahead and put it into the equation and we'll let the equation calculate it for us. So we're going to start with net income. In this case, we get $55,000. So that's a 55, looks like a 50, 55,000 minus a preferred share of $16,000. And we are going to divide this by the average. So the average would have be would be seven hundred and sixty thousand plus eight thirty, and then we're going to divide that by two. So when we do this calculation, fifty five thousand minus sixteen thousand. Uh, which would give you like 39,000 divided by the average of 760 plus 830, we are going to get 4.91% or 0.0491. So 4.91%. So what does that mean? That means that for every dollar that's invested by an investor, the company is able to return 4.91% in profit to that common shareholder. Now, does that mean that $4 and uh, 4.91%. So does that mean that for every $100 that an investor invests, they're going to get $4.91 back? Not necessarily because we said that companies don't always pay dividends. That's number one. And number two is they shouldn't pay the entire amount because they need to continue to invest and innovate in their company and they need capital to do that. So um, of this 4.19%, maybe a shareholder only sees one or 2%, 1% uh, of this 4.91 or 2% of this 4.91%. So that is what our return on equity is. So that is a look on return on equity. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.